wanted to create a video discussing sleep paralysis and astral projection. I have a bunch of uh, footnotes here, so bear with me. I wouldn't have been able to wing all this information off the top of my head without sounding retarded, so I uh, put my thoughts down on paper to help me with the video. So astral projection, what is it? How do you do it? Why is sleep paralysis uh, so freaky? For those who don't already know what astral projection is, it's basically the ability to project your consciousness, your spirit, your soul outside of your body. As for uh, paralysis goes though, I first noticed it myself a few years ago. I, I would wake up in the middle of the night or in the morning unable to move. I noticed every time that this happened that it felt like, uh, like, a, like a blanket, an invisible blanket was placed on top of me. Uh, some force was holding me down. Sometimes it would even feel like uh, this force was choking me. I didn't realize later that this sensation is completely normal, but at the time, as you can imagine, it was one of the most horrifying things I was experiencing. It didn't stop there either. Anyone who's had an out-of-body experience knows exactly what I'm talking about. But for those who don't, uh, when you consciously astral project or attempt to astral project, you go through a whole list of other things that can be viewed or perceived as terrifying. For instance, if you're conscious while, while this is happening, you can experience what seems like uh, physical sensations, like uh, the blankets moving, or your, your clothes being pulled or tugged on. And also uh, what a lot of people uh, report experiencing are audible hallucinations. Uh, hearing sounds around you, like things shuffling around. Uh, sometimes it can be extremely loud and there's no lack of imagination as to some of the things you can hear. Uh, for me, I personally heard voices calling my name out loud, screaming, what sounds like growling noises, which is something that I just recently experienced freaked the shit out of me. Also, jackhammering noises or loud hums or buzzing sounds, even train or engine like noises or music, like you're uh, tuning into a radio station or something like that. And it sounds like you're using your ears when you're listening to these sounds instead of something that is being generated inside your own mind. So naturally, if you're experiencing this, especially if you grew up under religious circumstances like I did, you're automatically going to think you're being possessed by an invading spirit or some type of devil, which is utter bullshit. Even though possession might be an actual phenomenon, it wasn't what was happening to me and it's not what I think is happening to, to many others. Who are experiencing this. This was happening to me so often with such intensity that finally I, I had to go to the doctor in the middle of the night after I experienced this. One of the sensations I used to get a lot would be my ears ringing and vibrating so loud with such intensity that it felt like my head was going to explode. Uh, it literally felt like there was something really seriously wrong with me so I, I had to get it checked out. So I go to the doctor and he tells me that I have night terrors and I'm suffering from sleep process and he basically just laughs the shit off. And I'm stuck with the bill in a story, right? But it happens again shortly after and at this point I'm so fucking fed up with this shit. I go to my local church right down the street from where I live and have the priest pray over me and bless and bless water that I end up drinking and also used to bless my home with. I'm not sure if it was the ritual act of surrender or or my belief in it that made it work, but after that the experience stopped. About a year or two later though, I'm up late 
randomly searching the web and I come across this video on YouTube talking about astral projection and lucid dreams that I found interesting called Lucidology 101 on YouTube, which I recommend you guys checking out if you haven't already. Uh, later the same night, after watching the video, I go to bed, but I wake up to find myself slowly getting up from my body in my astral form. And I remember, I remember everything about it. I remember getting up, slowly turning to my side, and looking over my shoulder down at my body, and how surreal it felt. I remember feeling uh, like almost like like five sense the five senses that you experience in the, in the physical world, like you experience in the astral world. It's like your, your senses are heightened in the astral. So I, I get up after I like evaluate myself and then I walk to my door and I try to turn the knob but my hand goes through the knob and I'm trying to figure out what's going on with that. So after that I, I float through the door, pass through the door into my hallway, float through the laundry pantry area to my right and float through the wall into the living room and once I'm in the living room I, I go to the front door and I try the handle again and the handle uh, and my hand goes through the handle so I float through the door and uh, I walk up the stairs to my front porch and once I get there I have no idea what's going on or, or what to do so I go so ba basically once I once I get there I just like just stare around for a minute until my body gets zapped back for some reason and I feel this huge this huge like jolt to my body and it's so powerful it, it almost hurt like rubber band or something being stretched and snapped back uh, something like that one thing I failed to mention though is I noticed a few of these sensations you get when you experience sleep paralysis after after I got pulled back, which for me basically was my defining moment of, of clarity and realization on the subject. So from that point forward, I dedicated myself to it, and I'm still learning and having struggled with it. It's like I have to rewire my brain all over again because of all that time I spent believing the experience was something evil. It's not evil. I have had some life changing experiences though uh, since then and I wanted to this is why I wanted to, to make this video is because I wanted to share some tips and also uh, link you to some additional sources that have helped me get out of body uh, one tip is uh, using binaural beats or isochronic pure tones uh, within the four to seven Hertz range during meditation and while sleeping that's really useful. A big one is using affirmations, uh, which basically means telling yourself you'll have a conscious OBE before you lay down out loud and in, in your head over and over again uh, for a minute or two or for as long as you want. Um, whatever gives you the best results, depending on the person. Uh, reality checks are really important to do as well. Pinching yourself or, or looking at a clock or clapping your hands, counting your fingers, jumping up and down in the astral. These things will often look and sound different. Uh, try different sleeping positions. Most people spend every night sleeping in the same spot, so try something different. You might be surprised at the results you get. My first time I became aware of that and I uh, tried it with the intent, of course, of projecting. I had one of the most bizarre experiences I have had while projecting. I also tried different, different times. Most people, from what I've learned and from my own experiences, um, tend to have better luck trying to project uh, during the morning and afternoon. Uh, one important tip would be to use the law of attraction to your advantage. So, say if you're into art, um, you could try painting yourself on a canvas, uh, astral projecting. Um, 
and put it above your bed where you where you normally lay down like you would like you would a dream catcher or if you if you like to write try writing a poem of affirmations and, and putting it in your room where you can constantly see it so it's constantly working on your subconscious also uh, could create a sigil if you wanted um, which is basically just like a symbolic ritual uh, read a lot into it too read a lot of literature into it a good book I'm reading right now that gets into this is the Tibetan Book of the Dead um, and basically that that whole book has to do with um, meditation out-of-body experiences and the after-death state so it, that's a really useful and helpful book uh, as far as um, as far as the law of attraction though goes uh, for people that are skeptic about the law of attraction um, it, it is a reality uh, I had this one crazy experience when I was younger when I used to live in Idaho uh, my parents took me to this this lake out in the middle of nowhere called Leslie Gulch and uh, it was a fishing trip and I wasn't really into fishing and we were basically up all night fishing and I remember sitting on the edge I cast out my line and I was I was waiting for a good just 15 20 minutes I got super bored of it and I remember at, at that point looking up at the stars for another like 45 minutes so like I was there not there for about an hour it probably was like two o'clock in the morning and uh, I, I was just staring up waiting for a wishing star so I could make a wish on the star to catch a fish well finally a shooting I, I do end up seeing a shooting star about an hour after after looking up in the sky, which was a pretty long time to just stare at the sky waiting for a wishing star just so I can just wish on a <laughs> falling meteorite to catch a fish. But I see a shooting star right after I see the shooting star or during and after I wish to catch a fish. And literally right after I make that wish and, and as the, com or the, the meteorite burns up, this huge I get this huge tug on my my pole, and I couldn't I couldn't I got I couldn't believe what was going on. I was so shocked, and I I ended up reeling the fish in, and I noticed that the fish had been caught on somebody else's line that my line got snagged on, and there was no bait even on the hook. That just completely blew my fucking mind. So that means I was there for an hour waiting to see a shooting star to catch a fish. As soon as I see a shooting star, I wish to catch a fish. And I catch a fish at the exact moment that I wish upon it. And not only do I catch a fish at the exact moment I make the wish, but I catch a fish on somebody else's line that my line got snagged on on the bed of the lake so for those that don't for those that don't believe in a lot of attraction I can attest to it and say that it it's a reality it exists uh, but some other tips as far as what you can use to get out of body obviously you want to meditate uh, I'd say meditate for at least an hour a day. If you can't do that because of restrictions, something is better than nothing. Um, so I'd say you want to focus on your, your chakra, kundalini, and yoga. Um, another one is you, get, you have to ignore the fear that all those feelings and sensations create and remain calm. And you don't want to become too excited either. Uh, another one is trying what's called the wake back to sleep method which is a fairly easy method and simple concept your body wakes up naturally throughout the night and what you do when this happens is nothing uh, that is to say you don't want to go back to sleep obviously if you're trying to project 
So remain still and don't move, don't make a sound, uh, don't open your eyelids, scratch your nose, uh, swallow or, or any of that. Keep your breathing shallow. If you do it right, you will trick your mind into thinking your body is still asleep and if you're successful, you'll soon after start to feel your body paralyzing and the sensations that come with it, but it's different for everyone. Uh, also, try the WILD method, which is one of the hardest in my opinions, but uh, it's easy for some. Uh, it just depends on the person, I guess. It's called the WAKE-induced lucid dreaming method. And how you go about it is trying to basically trick your body into, uh, into going asleep while you're still fully awake, aware, and conscious. And how you do this is by laying basically flat on your back with your arms to your side. Make sure your head is properly elevated because a lot of people, including myself, have problems with uh, swallowing at a certain point. So it's important that your head is appropriately adjusted to what works best for you. Uh, your mind will soon start to send out uh, these signals, or what's called the uh, uh, rollover signals to your body t uh, to test whether or not it's still asleep by uh, an urge to scratch your arm or move your leg which is something I get every time I lay down or project uh, it can get to the point where it can feel extremely painful so if uh, so if you have a problem with like fatigue uh, I would suggest maybe uh, like stretching beforehand. I, I noticed that it, it's helped with me a little bit. But you, you want to ignore these signals, otherwise you'll like reset yourself. Probably why a lot of people suffer from uh, insomnia because of constant thinking, tossing and turning. Every time you toss and turn, you reset your body, so you don't want to be doing any of that shit. Uh, you don't want to move your eyes either when you're doing this and you don't and you want to make sure your breathing is very calm and shallow uh, if you can withstand the torment of the, the mind-body awake test then you'll set in motion the experiences of sleep paralysis and if you can survive that then chances are you'll have an amazing experience uh, another tip is using crystals crystals help uh, obviously you want to have a healthy diet. You don't want to be feeding yourself a bunch of a bunch of junk before going into doing something like this. Another tip many might not think to do is uh, what I just mentioned earlier is to stretch. Uh, it's, your body is usually tense uh, almost every time you go to sleep, so you, you want to stretch for at least 10 to 15 minutes. Also, I heard wearing wearing socks because your feet get really cold. Uh, uh, staring at yourself is uh, staring at yourself in the mirror is another weird trick that creates an optical illusion of having an out-of-body experience if done properly. Uh, don't look at yourself up close, but stand back maybe like a foot or two, and stand straight and look into your pupils from a distance while using your peripheral vision to observe the rest of your body like you would look at one of those uh, 3D magic eye pictures. Uh, hold that focus and intent and soon you'll start to notice some interesting things happen. Let's just say it's a, basically it's a, a quick way of tricking your mind into associating itself with the spirit. So, uh, some people believe that mirrors are, are portals and that's probably why one of the reasons why it's probably why some people during uh, during the time of death and funerals actually like cover mirrors or take them out of the house. A lot of people also wonder. Uh, oh, the, the most important thing though is keeping a dream journal. The idea is. The idea around that is the more awareness you give to your dreams, the more aware the more aware you'll be in your dreams and also in your waking life. A lot of people also wonder if they encounter entities in the astral. And the, and the answer to that is yes. Uh, 
So prepare yourself for that. It doesn't automatically mean there are evil beings waiting to devour your soul, and your mind shouldn't automatically take you there. My first experience with an entity, I was not expecting it at all, and it, it kind of freaked me out. And even though it wasn't necessarily evil, an evil experience, it, it just startled me. It was still startling. Um, I, was, I was trying a different sleep, sleeping position on the floor in the living room by the couch, and I practiced my meditation and fell into a light sleep and awoke in paralysis. Shortly, the, sh shortly thereafter, laying on my side with uh, one of my arms above my head, uh, my eyelids were closed and it appeared to be dark and I, I couldn't see anything. Uh, I, I couldn't even move my eyelids. Uh, that's how deep in the paralysis I was. Uh, but, but I was uh, conscious and aware of the position that I was in. And I noticed and felt this, this hand uh, holding and caressing uh, my hand, the hand that was above my head. So, it kind of freaked me out. Um, nobody, nothing really prepares you. I mean, there, there are videos that will explain that, you know, you, there could be a potential for you to run into entities in the astral world, but it's one thing to say it, and it's another thing to experience it. And so, so just, you know, prep yourself for it, because there might be a possibility you could run into uh, some spirit guides or something like that. I think the initial response is almost always fear, so naturally I ended up uh, uh, ending the experience as soon as I could. If you ever have an experience you're uncomfortable with, uh, just change your breathing pattern um, and you'll come out of the, the, the paralysis. But prepare yourself because it is possible you'll have spirits around you that might want to connect with you over there. Uh, as far as possession goes, if you're worried about something like that, there are things you can do like uh, surrounding yourself with light using your imagination beforehand, just as, as uh, an example. One of the best things though about astral projection are the various benefits you get from it. Uh, as far as extrasensory perception is concerned, you definitely become more intuitive and perceptive, uh, perceptive. Uh, depending on the individual being, you can become more empathic, uh, clairvoyant, telepathic, precognitive, and a host of other amazing qualities. But one of the most important things, in my opinion, is becoming more self-conscious and aware. There's literally endless possibilities of what not only can be perceived, but what can be achieved. Uh, Edgar Casey, also known as the Sleeping Prophet, uh, is a really great example of, of this, as well as others. Uh, a major benefit you'll get from projecting and meditating and working on your spirituality is noticing if you're, uh, if you're doing it right, synchronicities and deja vu, things like that. Uh, if you you want to pay attention to the synchronicities happening in your life because they they mean something. They mean something important to you. Uh, some examples of synchronicities, and this is probably like one of the biggest things of of getting in touch more with yourself is you'll start to notice these synchronicities happening like all the time, all over the place. Uh, some examples of it are like with myself. I've experienced. Uh, like thinking of somebody and having them uh, call you moments later or thinking of a song while you're in the car only to turn on the radio and have that song be playing these are, are pretty common but the most aware you become the, the more the aware, more aware you become of them and the more spiritual work you do on yourself you'll start to experiencing you start to experience more and more complex structured synchronicities and they become more frequent. Uh, I've had some really bizarre experiences with that, like I'll be reading a book, for instance, and I'll have the TV on in the background uh, playing, 
and I'll be reading a certain line and uh, come to a, a couple words within that sentence that perfectly syncs up with what is being said on the TV at the exact moment, word for word. If it was just one word, I might not think too much about it, but I've had several words sync uh, before at the exact same time. Also happens when I listen to music or like when I'm in a conversation. Or I could have uh, a very random personal thought uh, about something very specific, something that nobody in a thousand years uh, would guess and be brought up in a conversation literally right after having thought of it. Uh, so pay attention to these things uh, and notice how you feel when it happens, what you're doing the moment you experience it, uh, what you were thinking before, during, and what you started to think immediately afterwards. Uh, who was around who was around you and how they make you feel basically every time it happens you want to try to capture the entire moment in full clarity and then reflect and meditate on its meaning so uh, that's pretty much what I wanted to share uh, astral projection shouldn't be feared it should be explored with an open mind in my mind in my opinion it's the Philosopher's Stone, the Holy Grail of spiritual liberation over ignorance. So thanks for watching, and I hope somebody found this video helpful. You guys take care.